Good evening, everybody. I'm Arti. I'm an engineering student. Um, I believe that most religions are just a set of beliefs. Hinduism is a belief. Islam is a is a belief. Christianity is a belief. Uh, and most most major religions like the Islam or the Hindu Hinduism or the Christianity uh, have been formed through ages. They have they have come past through a lot of lot of ages. So they can there can be a lot of additions and subtractions uh, which can add value to the religion and which can also uh, cause some kind of a demolition to the, to, the, to the name of the religion itself. So my question is, why do we have to stick on to few religious books like the Quran or the Vedas to follow a life of our own? Why can't we just take the rights, the positives and the negatives and leave the negatives alone and take the positives of the Quran and take the positives of the Vedas alone and, and lead a life of good? And and uh, no matter what, for example, no matter what the Vedas say or no matter what the Quran says, I believe that a man should have a single wife. And I would definitely, I would definitely not agree upon the fact that the Vedas contain something like that or the Quran con contains something like that. It is up to my conscience to leave off the negatives of however great a religious book might be and take the positives of the book alone. And why, why are we here to even discuss about the, the I mean, why, why, why are we here to even discuss about the the differences and similarities between the two great religions. Why can't we just take the postures of both religions and just lead a life of our own? Very That's good. That's my question. Sister has asked a very good question. A very good question, a very relevant question. That why should we follow religion? Why Hinduism? Why Islam? Why Christianity? Why not follow the good things of all? And that's it. Finish. Who will decide what is good, what is bad? For example, in America, wearing skirts and shorts is common in Western country. It is modest. So for there, wearing skirts and shorts is modest. If you wear in Chennai, if a girl walks on the streets with shorts and skirts, you will call it immodest, including you, sister. Even you say she is immodest. So what is modest in America is not modest here. When I went to America a few years back, there was a person who told me that you Indian women, you are immodest. I was shocked. Why? How come Indian women are modest? Because when you wear the sari, you show your belly. So for the American, for the American, the woman showing the belly is immodest. So who will decide? If you go to certain Muslim countries, the Arab countries, looking at a woman, staring at a woman is immodest. Here, as long as you don't touch a woman, you can talk to her, you can look at her, it's modest. Therefore, when you greet the Indian, they say namaste without touching. In the Western countries, it is common that you shake hands. So shaking hand between a lady and a man is modesty. As long as you shake hand and don't touch any other part of the body, in some Western country it is modest. In other Western countries, kissing a woman on the lips and the cheek is modest. In some Western countries, you can do what you want, the male and the female. As long as you do willingly, it is modest. <laughs> Who will decide? Who will decide? Who will decide? If you go to America, there are nude beaches. There is a ship I read in the Times of India two months back, a new cruise, a nude cruise. Nude. Everyone in the ship will be nude. For them it is modest. Who will decide? The best person to decide is the creator sister. Now I am asking you who will decide what is right, what is wrong? Who will decide? And if you say that select the best, I am with you. I agree with you sister. Select the best of all the religions. So that's what I have done. I have selected the best from the Vedas. But, but what is best is not best for you. That's the problem. I'll discuss that also. I challenge, I challenge any human being to point out a single principle of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. Single. I challenge, I say, I'm not speaking on behalf of the other Muslims. I'm putting my head on the guillotine. I challenge anyone, anyone. Yes, there may be many non-Muslims who may think certain thing is wrong. For example, the sister disagrees with a man having more than one wife. I'll discuss that, inshallah. After I give you the answer, you'll be convinced, inshallah, God willing. You'll be convinced. For example, if you ask a problem, two plus two is how much? If you don't know the answer, I'll give you the answer. Now, once you know the answer, you get convinced. So what do you have to discuss, sister? The things which you don't agree, you can come on the microphone and tell me, I am just a student. I'll try my level best with Allah's help to try and reply. Now, though the Vedas say you can marry more than one wife, the Christian Bible says, the Quran says. Now, you don't believe in all of them, no problem. Let's talk about logic. Let's talk about logic. 
Sister, do you know by nature, male and female are born in equal proportion? By nature, male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any pediatrician, a doctor of the children, he will tell you that the female child can fight the germs and diseases better than the male child. So in the pediatric age itself, there are more male children dying as compared to female children. So in pediatric age itself, there are more females than the males. As life goes on, death, death due to cigarette smoking, death due to alcoholism, death due to accident, death due to war, more male are dying as compared to female. So today in the world, there are millions of women more in the world as compared to male. Only in some countries, third world countries like India, the female population is less than the male population. You know why? Because of female infanticide. According to a BBC report, <laughs> BBC report, according to Emily Beckenin, on the program Let Her Die, the topic was assignment. Every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted in India after they identified that they're females. That means more than 1 million fetuses are being aborted in India every year after they identified they're females. If you stop this evil practice, and according to Tamil Nadu Government Hospital report, this state of yours, that report says, out of 10 females born alive, 4 are put to death. Do you say it is right? It is wrong. If you stop this evil practice, even in India, the female population will become more than the male population. In America alone, there are 7.8 million females more than male. In UK alone, there are 4 million females more than male. In Germany alone, there are 5 million females more than male. In Russia alone, there are 9 million females more than male. God alone knows how many millions of females are more than males in the world. Suppose, sister, hypothetical question. Suppose my sister happens to live in America. Or suppose your sister happens to live in America, USA, and the market is saturated. Every man has found a woman for himself. Yet, there will be 7.8 million females who will not find life partners. Now, only option remaining for them, for these females who have got no life partner, is that either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property. <laughs> you may say, public property? Brother Zakir, such a harsh word. Sister, it is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot use a better word. In America, on average, the statistics tell us a person has eight different sexual partners before you settle down with one. Mistresses is common. You can have 10, 20, 30, no problem. 100 also. The law will not say anything. If you marry more than one wife, that thing doesn't go down their throat. Why? In mistresses, the woman does not get a right. She's degraded. She's dishonored. In Islam, when you have a second wife, you have to give equal rights. She has the honor. She has respect, but I do agree with you, sister. I agree with you that no woman, no woman under normal circumstances would like to share a husband with any other woman. I agree with you. I agree with you, sister. But, but the basic law of the Islamic Sharia is let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. Means let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. So all the Muslim, all the Muslim women who know that there are millions of women, if they would not allow the husband to have more than one wife, they will become public property. They say, we would not mind sharing a husband to prevent our other sisters to become public property. Hope that answers the question. <laughs>